our students can follow in MIT. Come with me. Uh, hi, how are you today? I'm good, thank you very much. So, uh, what is this MIT Open Day? What do you do today? So today at our MIT Open Day, it's a really good opportunity for us to get all our community in. Uh, people who generally prefer to talk to people face to face, they can come in and they can um, anywhere from and talk to our lecturers, uh, have some tours of the campuses and even make an application on the spot if they want to. Yeah, and uh, why you recommend MIT uh, when compared to the other universities and colleges in, in New Zealand to international students? Yeah, so MIT, we really pride ourselves on one of the first of all a community feel. We've been uh, operating in South Auckland for 50 years now. Okay. Uh, we we really support our students. You know, we we put a lot of effort into making sure that our students are supported all the way from from when they apply all the way through to when they graduate. And we really pride ourselves on hands-on skills, so we get really good training where you come in and you know you actually do have skills that you're learning on the spot uh, rather than just theory. So uh, what are the uh, different departments of studies we have in uh, MIT? So MIT has got in a wide range of, of areas of studies and programs all across all different levels, all the way from beginner through to advanced. Uh, so we've got business and we've got digital technologies that now has got our new um, postgraduate and master's programs um, all the way to maritime. So if you're interested in um, you know, sh the shipping industry, logistics, floristry, hairdressing, education, different languages, including English, um, you know, social work, sports and all the way through to engineering, uh, carpentry. If you want to be a builder or a plumber, you can do everything here at MIT. It's very wide range. Yeah, so um, uh, MIT in general is very, very multicultural. I think if you if you get some shots later on at the open day, you'll see that we've got people from all ethnicities. So obviously, Māori and Pacifica, uh, there's a lot of, but we also have a large contingent of um, international students or even domestic students from India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, um, the entire subcontinent. Of course, a lot of um, Chinese um, as well. So yeah, we're very, very multicultural at MIT. I, I, um, you know, we're set in South Auckland, which is the most multicultural um, neighborhood or area within New Zealand to begin with. So uh, yeah, it's always bound to happen. And of course we support and include and celebrate all cultures. You know, we're looking forward to Diwali yeah, uh, this exactly. month. So that'd, yeah. be, that's, that's, that'd be a good event too. Yeah. And also, uh, what are the uh, like, campuses you have in uh, New Zealand? Like how many uh, campuses in MIT? Yeah, we've got a few. Uh, so right now we're standing in the Monaco campus yeah. where uh, business, digital technologies, nursing, health and maritime are taught out of. Uh, we've also got an, a, a campus in Otara that's not too far away from here. It's probably about uh, about 10 minutes drive from here. Okay. Uh, and right across the road we've got our brand new technology park. So that was a purpose-built uh, building for all our trades. So that's building, plumbing, engineering, automotive. Uh, that's all brand new and that's recently been built. We've also got a small campus up in the city and also another campus in Mahurangi, which is probably about uh, an hour and a half's drive north of here. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Uh, good. So tell us about your department. So you are representing hospitality? That's correct, yeah. Hospitality, cookery and, and uh, bakery. All right. Um, so which is the, the, the buzz of any country and an industry. Um, we, we cover all aspects of, of hospitality. Um, we've got the bakery school, full on kitchen, where you learn you know, from baking cakes, baking cookies, to the full production of your own uh, business. Uh, well, on the cookery side, from your different types of catering uh, to fine dining, um, and then front of, home, front of house business. And, and also, what, uh, what's the future of children, like international students, when they choose hospitality? Well, the future is exciting. Um, obviously, the doom and gloom of, of COVID that's happening around, but it's it's going to come back around. Uh, and once that happens, people want to get out. Tourism is going to boom. New Zealand is the most attractive country in the world at the moment because yeah. we're pretty much COVID-free and living life as normal. Um, so it is ideally the career to get into. Um, from you know, having your own restaurant to being a top chef, um, there's always jobs out there. There's always a shortage of, of specialized trade. Uh, the great thing about MIT is we do a lot of in job practice, so you get to know what is expected for you once you reach out to the industry, uh, and a lot of good relationships with the industry itself. And also, you get uh, like you give children uh, a practical knowledge as well. 
uh, rather than the theory knowledge. And that's correct. That's what hospitality is all about, is giving the practical skills. We're a, we're a hands and do it, not a, a read and write it. Um, so we have four production kitchens, um, from the bakery side down to the cookery. We have a full service restaurant, uh, which we serve uh, functions as well as everyday lunch. Mm. Uh, we have our own bakery. Uh, we have our own coffee roastery, so we actually roast our own coffee on site. So the students get the, the game graphic from everything, from serving a plate, to running a business, to baking, to cooking, to making coffees. Uh, we have relationships, we have got a career department within MIT uh, that help the students into that gateway. So we have a direct relationship with the hotels, uh, the top the restaurant groups, um, transitioning the students into a career. So we help them with the CVs uh, and obviously top pick because we're recommended. Hi, how are you? Uh, Morena. Morena, yeah. <laughs> so what is this department? Uh, this is the nursing department. Um, so we have a suite of programs at MIT. We have the Bachelor of Nursing Pacifica, Bachelor of Nursing Māori and Bachelor of Nursing... Um, we also have a Diploma of Enrolled Nursing and we have a CAP program for international students. Um, but all the other programs that I've just um, outlined um, have international students in them as well. Okay, so uh, what's the future for international students if they chose nursing uh, as their stream of learning? Uh, well, they come in and do our CAP program. We try and place them in a clinical placement um, similar to a role that they've been in before. And once they're through the CAP program, they're um, entitled to um, be employed in any nursing um, situation in New Zealand. And uh, uh, in, this, in nursing, do you have like a registration or anything, any level that you have to uh, pass uh, to work as a nurse in New Zealand? Oh, absolutely. So um, the Bachelor of Nursing, the Bachelor of Nursing Pacifica and the Bachelor of Nursing Māori and the Diploma of Enrolled Nursing um, has uh, registration authority that they have to pass. So they sit a state final exam and they pass that. Um, so international students come into all those programs um, and we absolutely welcome them uh, to come into those programs. Look, we, you know, we really support them, we look after them, uh, we make sure that they've got the right support around them. Um, but also the employment opportunities in New Zealand are um, fantastic for them coming to New Zealand. So absolutely fantastic place to be, uh, MIT for international students and um, yeah, we've got some great uh, lecturers that actually uh, are feeding them through, support them through and um, help them in their journey and make sure they are well supported. Yeah, and also uh, during the learning uh, years, do you give the practical skills, also practical experience to the students? Oh, absolutely. Look, um, upstairs on level four, um, we have a fantastic lab. Um, we have Mark, our uh, lab manager, um, who has a great suite of, um, I guess, like different anatomy and physiology, um, what would you say, um, Display. Models, displays, um, they do some fantastic stuff in the lab. Um, also we have a clinical learning suite um, which is set up like a mini hospital um, where they can learn all the different skills that they need to have when they're actually doing the nursing program. Uh, for MIT we are looking at going into the augmented reality, so that's the HoloLens, um, and that will um, aid them with their learning in terms of actually being real life in front of a patient and learning those skills that they need before they actually reach uh, the bedside of the patient. Yeah. So this is the area that our students come to learn the practical hands-on experience in, t in terms of dissect dissecting and looking at which, which parts belong to what. Um, so our students spend in, in our year one, sort of the nursing programs and our foundation programs, spend quite a bit of time up here just having a look and, and um, pulling things apart. As you can see there's quite a lot of different mannequins. Um, experiments that they do. When we have people do the lectures, they can transpose it onto our screens so students can see it in, in the screen. We have approximately about 40 students who come into this area and they, um, they have quite an interactive session with, with, with our lab. Um, science teachers. So Emma is one of our lab science teachers and um, so she takes part of it in here. Yeah, okay. yeah. We used to do brains. We used to do brains. We, we, we do that as a demo. Yep. Um, you put it on the eye of the Yeah, put your hand in there and pull it down. Oh, huh. Have a feel of it. 
It won't move. Okay, it's not my house. It's not your house. My husband annoyed me last night. So just just pull it out and have a feel of it. You can feel how. So just. Um, Ash. Let me shape it. Feel how tough it is. Oh yeah, it'll be shaped. Perfect. So that's a that's a real. I'm Shona Denham, and I'm one of the technician. Well, I am the technician who runs this area. This is our clinical skills area for our student nurses. Um, this is where they come when they're starting to learn all the basic skills that they need for practice out in the clinical area when they go out on placement. So they start off doing really basic things, learning how to do hand hygiene, learning how to make beds, um, and then progress on. Um, so if you'd like to come through here, I'll show you. Um, we've got two big rooms set up in here. Two classes, quite cold. One on the side, one on the other side with the, all the beds um, and some of the equipment you can see uh, um, are some of the things that the students use. These uh, hoists are a hoist that we um, get someone to stand on when we're moving people around and they can't move themselves when they sometimes use electric hoists and, and some of the hospitals they have overhead hoists now so they come down from the ceiling and the patient is in a sling and they are moved around um, on the hoist rather than being lifted by the nurses. Over there you'll see um, the emergency trolley that is used in, in the hospital at Middlemore um, and all the wards and departments. Someone has um, a cardiac arrest, they grab that crash trolley and take that to the patient. And we practice um, doing resuscitation on the mannequins there. Through the back room you can see there are bedpans and we have a, a set up room and we have a couple of showers. We teach our students how to do showering. Um, we also run simulations with our mannequins. Um, this is set up to look like an inpatient setting and so the patient um, is a mannequin but the, behind the one-way window um, the, the lecturer will sit and talk into a microphone and be the voice of the mannequin so the students come in and they have to talk and respond to the mannequin. They will um, have to look at the, the charts which are on the end of the bed and um, then we um, they have to try and respond to the patient's needs. Um, it's like a little play really. You can see a video up there, one of our lecturers has just been filmed recently talking to some of our students about giving oral medication. We use a lot more video um, footage now to record so that we can have a, um, things online for students to go back to and revisit when they are um, needing to refresh their memory. It's really great if you've got it on record. So it's a lot easier to remember sometimes when someone's visually explaining something than just having it written down. Um, yeah, so this is our lovely facility. So we, we've been here for just over two years now and um, it's, it's a great place. We have a lot of things happening here every day. Sorry, but I don't want to talk. Need a moment before I go. Hi, how are you? Uh, Excellent. Uh, so what is this department? Yeah. Okay, so we've got the School of Arts and Education and this particular one, um, this particular area covers education. So we've got programs in early childhood education, um, programs in tertiary teaching and programs in um, inclusive education. Yeah. So, uh, so how is it like uh, useful for international students to learn this? Yeah. We have a lot of, um, quite a few international students um, who do early childhood in particular. So they would come in to get um, a qualification in, in early childhood education. Yeah, some of them stay here, some of them return to their countries. And, uh, and how it goes with the registration? Are there particular levels that you have to cover if you want to get teacher yes. registration? So we have a few, the programs that we offer are a level four certificate program, which is a six month program. We have a level five diploma program, which is a year long program. And we have a bachelor of education, early childhood teaching. Um, that is the qualification that leads to registration. Yes, all of our programs are ha what we call field based programs. So they all have a practical component as part of each course. Yeah. So, um, and that's one of the big selling points is that they're having that, that practical experience as they're learning. Yep. So, um, in the, obviously in the bachelor, they, they do field, they have a home centre, they do their field based experience each um, week in that, and then they have blocks of teaching practice both in their home centre and in different centres that we 
send them both. Yeah. Um, the diploma has the same requirements and the certificate also has that field-based practical component. Uh, and one more last thing, yeah. and uh, do you like uh, help them to find, after finishing the course, are you helping them to find centres or schools to work? Um, if they need it, we can do that. Excuse me. Um, generally when they're finding a home centre that is their own, that's their responsibility to do that. If they have and, and a whole lot of criteria will impact upon that, generally proximity yeah. to where they live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for centres that we want them to do blocks of teaching practice in, um, we will actually organise the centre for them. Yeah. Mm. So it's a mixture of both. Yeah. Sorry but I don't want to talk need a moment before I go uh, so, uh, what about this department? What is this department? So, at Floristry School, we have three different levels. Levels two for beginners, if you're brand new to the industry. You can progress on to level three and then on to level four. So, we prepare you to get work ready to work in the floor industry. That can be working in large scale events, wedding work, corporate work. Um, you'll learn everything from the names of flowers, how to treat them, how to look after them, where to store them. You'll start making designs. You'll be making bouquets, lots of spiralling and hand tying. Um, base medium designs where um, moving away from Oasis and looking at more sustainable forms of design, chicken wire and things like this. And also all the wedding flowers, so corsages, flower crowns, wedding bouquets, how you decorate an event. Um, so it's a very hands-on program, there's lots and lots of practical, there is some theory, we teach you about the colours, colour wheel, colour harmonies, and elements and principles of design, and uh, there are many, many um, aspects and avenues that students can go into in the flower industry, working for small businesses, self-employed, um, there's lots of events and things going on. Um, so it's mostly practical, you're on your feet a lot, um, you need a degree of physical fitness because it can be tiring if you're not used to that kind of activity, but no two days are ever the same. And it's, um, I'm, I'm biased of course, I love it, I was a florist for 20 years in Glasgow in Scotland and I've been teaching at MIT for 10 years now. So we're ahead of trends, we're looking at what's coming through from overseas in terms of trends and um, it's a great job and a career to go into if you like working with your hands. And at MIT, you can come and be in a room full of like-minded people and learn together. Sorry, but I don't want to talk. I need a moment before I go. I'm from Manukau Institute of Technology, North New Zealand. And I've been involved in the logistics industry for over 40 years. Um, I started work in logistics in South Africa. I've also worked in London, uh, managing a department there uh, for a very large freight, international freight company. And um, I then came to New Zealand and immigrated to New Zealand. So I've had very broad experience and it's now my time to impart that knowledge, pay it forward to my students. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm a lecturer, I'm a senior lecturer in the logistics department. This is one of the few courses internationally uh, that you will find that actually makes student, students ready, uh, work ready, that's the word, work ready. Um, because we actually have lecturers who have been in the industry and lots of knowledge, and we're not just educationalists. We know what happens day to day. We know all the pitfalls, we know how you get from A to B starting off at the beginning and go all the way to the top. And I was branch manager of a very large spring That was my last real job. Uh, and then I started to train people. And uh, that's how I... Sorry, but I don't want to talk. I need a moment before I go. Well, we're the maritime school and we um, teach students to become uh, officers and captains, chief engineers on large uh, ocean going vessels. So those are container ships, boat carriers, passenger ships, and they uh, trade all over the world globally. And they basically are part of the big 
a transport chain. So we take uh, cargo from export to an export and we make the economy going. So even at the moment under COVID, all the ships are still going and they're very, very busy. So there's a big shortage of the maritime plane offices around the world. And um, we have a uh, intake is 20 to 25 students per year. And all very successful. So graduates from our program are typically becoming harbour master, main pilots, and they manage the ports in 15 and 20 years from now. So they have to go to sea as an officer and become a captain or a chief engineer. And then in 10, 15 years time, when they have a family and they want to come home to their home country, they become the pilots and the managers of, of the various uh, areas. And, and also, do you give them practical experiences also while... The, the study, the basic study, is a diploma program for your initial certification. Uh, it's a three-year program, which includes 12 months on board a ship. The sea time, the practical experience, is the responsibility of the student. We uh, help, we identify, we introduce the student to the shipping companies, but the student must find a company that will take them for 12 months when on the board they have to complete assignments and uh, that's a group of different tasks that's assigned up by the officers on board the and that's where they apply what we teach them in the first course. So in total it's a two-year study program but in uh, reality will take them about four years to complete that because once you start doing the back of it similar time on and off the ship so they could go with their time and it's long of time. Once they have completed their original certification, they have to work in the industry and then come back after a few years to come back for a higher level certificate so that they become a captain of the ship. And uh, so in total from starting the program to finishing it takes them about nine years. So three years first and then board the ship. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk. Need a moment before I go. So, hi, what? Very good, are you? Hi, we're, we're the school of sport at MIT. Uh, we're in, on the Otara campus, and among the qualifications that we have are the New Zealand Diploma in Sport Recreation and Exercise, the Bachelor Degree in Applied Sports Science, and the Graduate Diploma in Innovation and Entrepreneurship in Sport and uh, Community Context. So yeah, but uh, we're focused we're in, in South Auckland, where it's the heart of sport, we're focused on that whole sport industry in New Zealand. And also just tell about something like, do you give the uh, field experience also to your students? Um, absolutely. Um, Sport in New Zealand is, is, is of an applied nature, and that's the, the nature that we give our, our qualifications and the way that we work with our students. Uh, we are actually, the way we approach them is that we're co-workers with them. We're working and studying alongside them, and we take them into the different things that we're doing. Our lecturers are involved in coaching major sports teams in New, in New Zealand. And for example, with basketball, we have one of our lecturers that uses a group of our students that trains the female basketball team that was the national champions last year. I do a similar thing with in, in the rugby space. Um, so it is uh, an important part of how we work with our students that we take them in to work with real athletes on real sporting events that are being used in the industry. And how will be the uh, job opportunities in future if uh, students choose this plan? Well, Job of New Zealand sport is it's it's a big industry. Um, so there are both opportunities here domestically, but also overseas. One of the things that I, I personally do with students every year, I take a couple, two or three internship students over to South America to explore uh, being an intern in the sporting space in a different continent because New Zealand sport education is highly valued overseas and there, there's a huge market and appeal for professionally trained sports graduates uh, also overseas. So yes, we position our, our students domestically, but we also do uh, work with taking our students overseas and engaging them in overseas markets. Sorry, I don't want to talk.
match to the contents that we cover here. If there is a uh, at least 75 more person match, then we do the cross code. Other than that, we don't do the cross code. Uh, first of all, the, the, there's a lot of reasons why you don't do the cross code with the international one because where we teach here is a lot of local experience, New Zealand experience, New Zealand market, New Zealand needs, and. Whatever you do is always related to the culture. So that's component is, is not there, right? So that's why it is hard, uh, especially with the international one to do the cross cutting. However, still there is a possibility if there are some courses which actually, regardless the culture, regardless the environment, if it is more technical, that kind of course can be cross cutting. So if she can apply for the cross cutting and then the academic leader, they will ask for the evidence for it and then we will do the cross matching see that actually what proportion has been covered and how it is likely with our course that we covered if we found a match a significant match definitely there is a way to do the cross match and also like please tell us about the different like uh, study areas study levels oh yes yes and MIT what we have is, is a, we have a starting from certificate which we call level four uh, is a, like entry and as a certificate we have four courses uh, which are for six months, uh, you will have a hardware, you will have a programming, you will have a web development and database. So this is what we cover the wider spectrum of the IT. After the certificate, they would understand what is their interest, whether they like hardware, they like the programming, they like website. So it's, it's actually, you don't know when you, you know, you complete your uh, uh, secondary or high secondary education, you don't know whether you are good at programming or you're interested in programming or development, which one? So this one will actually give you very clear idea what is my interest, what I want to do. And with that, you can go for level five, six, and seven different levels of diplomas, or you can go for even bachelor program. And interestingly, as you see the name, you can see it here, we have a like four, four, four wider uh, aspect. One is software development, we also have web development, we also have data analytics and network. So nowadays, very important, I would say that all these are actually somehow interconnected. Use a software development, and if you don't know the networking, I mean, your software will run on a computer, and most of the software these days is like web-based software. So how do you know that your software will perform better if you don't know the networking? It's not like you would be the master in the networking, but you should have a basic knowledge. Without that, your software is probably can only run on your local machine, not on the network and you like to grow and you like to see your software as a product which can be sell everywhere and that's how it grows right now if you look around due to this you know current situation of covid 19 how many applications you have seen that can trace the contract a lot a lot i mean we have studied around more than 400 each country actually they have their own covid 19 tracer what they do they collect the data and how many people in New Zealand is like five million so we would like to see what happened with the people movement so we collect a lot of data and we understand try to understand from the data that's why the data analytics so we have very really hands-on experience and the way MIT is different than other places it is a polytech where we actually, our priority is a hands-on experience. And, and our experience are like our staff are from different industries. So they have the real industry experience and they actually connect the theory with the, with the practical things. And other interesting one is the job placement. We guide the student what needs to be done if you want to go for, you know, for your next endeavor. If you think about, we have in New Zealand eight universities. We have, I think, around 10, 10 or 15 a lot of graduates come out, right? When you apply for a job, how could I know I'll choose you? So we guide you what needs to be done to get in the ahead of the list of the job, right? It's not all of them are having same sort of degree, same sort of qualification, but how could I pick one from there? So you need to show some extracurricular activities and that becomes a deal. Uh, most of our course are actually aligned with the industry, like if you set up uh, uh, networking, aligned with the CCNA, uh, CCNT, if you talk about 
of the software development, it also aligns with the different methodology, agile methodology, project management methodology, it's really aligned with the industry practices. So that's how children get a better understanding and benefits if they want to go forward in the job market. <laughs> Saying that, New Zealand is a small country, right? But has a huge opportunity, especially in the IT sphere. If you, if, you, if, you, if you just Google it, the job market, you will see that a lot of software engineers that we need, IT experts we need, we don't have it here. So that's that's why this actually our investment, our time here to see that whether we can get the right student and prepare for, for the next round. So this is what is our goal. So any other areas like IoT, other robotics? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's a part of it. Like we have the we have each of the course, we have the special hot topics, and under the hot topics, we give the student to work on it, on them. Nowadays, 5G networking, IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning is all a part of it. However, saying that machine learning or artificial intelligence is not a uh, course that we deliver is a practice student use. Yeah. The, as a part of the course, we say that this is the for data analytics. We use a whole lot of machine learning algorithms. We use artificial intelligence. So that's kind of course are embedded. Even in the networking, we have the 5G networks. We also talked about part of the research, we also talked about 6G networks, which is like we call 5G beyond or 6G. So students get a real experience and that's why we have running two master's program. Uh, one on all on data analytics, another one is cyber security. Which is, I mean, no matter what you do, security is the biggest thing that you need to deal with, right? So we have the master's program that we started uh, uh, last in time, uh, and we have a couple of students. Uh, uh, because of the COVID restriction, we, we haven't got the um, international student, you know, the uh, travel restriction and all this stuff, but we got a lot of requests coming, and MIT with the other ITP is working with the government, how could we get, you know, international student on board? Because these two programs are really, really has real potential in the market, especially the data analytics and cyber security. So we are actually, I mean, whatever the technology you come, we actually adopt to it and we, I mean, the technology you cannot teach, technology you can practice. So we are most of a skill-based rather than theory-based. Here is to get the hands-on experience. University, if you look at their different type, university has an intention where people may go for a master's, PhD research, so they have a different, different goals. Our goal is to make ready a student for the for the job. Means that requires more of skills development. It can be your uh, uh, what we call the core core hard hardcore skills like you know programming, how to do the programming, how to create a, the troubleshooting the networking. Beside that, a lot of soft skills which is really really important for New Zealand. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Nathan. I'm the head of school for digital technologies here at Manuka. Uh, on this lovely campus right above Manukau train station. So uh, first thing that's important about having a campus to be on is that it's easy to get to uh, and it's a really good place to work. So we've got a modern teaching space. It's very, very easy to reconfigure. So when we go into one of the classrooms uh, up here on the uh, mezzanine floors, uh, we have desks that we can turn into small group work, large group work, uh, everybody looking at a presentation or everybody on a round table discussion um, and we find that it's really important to get that face to face time with students no matter what subject you're doing because we really want to take a hands on approach to everything that we do. So in digital technologies uh, we've got on the other side of the building a hardware lab and a networking lab that um, that we get students into so that they can reconfigure machines, be hands-on with the work that they do. So in a lot of places where you can study things like networking and hardware, you have a lecturer who stands in front of a whiteboard and talks about networking and hardware. And that's kind of like going to school to learn how to play tennis and you get a lecture on how to play tennis. So maybe you get good at talking about tennis, but you don't get good at playing tennis. And we feel the same way about digital technology that it's not really much use to be good at talking about digital technology. You want to get good at using and building digital technology. So we like to have people come here, pull machines apart, put them back together, pull networks apart, put them back together, write software, build software. And we do that right from level four, which bridges uh, high school and 
uh, degree work and then we have diplomas at level 5 and 6 a degree which covers from level 5 to level 7 and you end up with a degree qualification and we've just introduced postgraduate so uh, in our degree qualifications we're teaching software development and web development as one major um, network engineering as one major and data analytics as one major and then if you stay and do postgraduate work with us uh, or if you come already with an undergraduate qualification and do a postgraduate qualification with us you can choose between either cyber security or a data analytics major and you can do either a postgraduate certificate a postgraduate diploma or a full master's degree uh, all here on site uh, and of course while the world is is in challenges with post with uh, covid lockdowns uh, we are doing a lot of teaching where we've got some students here in class and some students uh, who are joining us at a distance uh, at the moment the only distance students that we can take are people who are here in New Zealand with us um, but what that means is that if you've been studying somewhere else as an international student and you want to continue your studies for instance into postgraduate with us then you can do that without necessarily being on site every single day uh, so at the moment um, we haven't yet introduced uh, a fully online version of these courses but at the moment we're mixing on-site and online so that if you're comfortable coming in and mixing with other people in the classroom you can do so uh, but if you have a concern uh, about transmission or anything like that then uh, it's possible to take some of your classes online we love to get you face to face if we can though because we just feel that uh, for, for hands-on work it's the best way to learn and we're very very lucky that in New Zealand uh, we're in a situation where we're down to level one we're very much hoping to stay there which means that we're able to bring people together into a classroom safely uh, as long as we just keep remembering to uh, be careful be safe and uh, sanitize as much as possible. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk. I need a moment before I go. It's love and passion. No, I try the blind. They don't need to see me cry. Cause even if they understand, they don't understand. So then when I finish them all by my business, I'm ready to save the world. I'm taking my misery, making my bitch call me.